the most evil characters in Naruto. One of the best aspects of the Naruto series has to be the antagonistic characters and villains throughout the show. These characters add excitement to an already alluring story, especially with how with a lot of the villains, we can actually come to understand their point of view and why they act the way they are. Like with Pain wanting to have peace and Madara enacting the Eye of the Moon plan. That said, there are certain characters throughout the show that you don't really feel sympathetic for as they can be seen as truly evil. They do stand out amongst the other antagonistic characters throughout the story, but in a different way given their motives and actions. The obvious first pick in having a downright evil character would have to be Orochimaru. One of the first main state villains in the story, Orochimaru has made an interesting impact on the story, especially when comparing him to future villains going forward. Orochimaru is considered evil because of his lack of morals, unethical experiments, and an unhealthy desire for power. There were always telltale signs that would suggest him becoming this way, even while he was still considered a leaf shinobi. During the second shinobi world war, Orochimaru was already shown to have a twisted mindset, specifically when it comes to the harsh reality of life, suggesting to kill off the rain village orphans that were suffering and had no way to defend themselves. Then you have his desire of studying all ninjutsu, which led him to doing horrific experiments on those that I'm sure didn't ask to be mutilated. And you got him wanting to seek revenge on Hiruzen and the higher-ups by destroying the Leaf Village, since their actions towards him led him down the path to begin with. You also have him wanting to take on the body of others to keep his body immortal, specifically with Romotaro wanting to prey on Sasuke's body to obtain his Uchiha skill set and Sharingan. He also tried to do the same with a young Itachi and Kimimaru. Certified sound ninja, certified pet. There wasn't a change in his character until after witnessing what his path would have become by observing what was done by Kabuto. He turned over a new leaf, but was for sure an evil individual to the eyes of the leaf. Sasuke is an interesting character to put in the list of the most evil characters because I low key think he is justified in his actions towards the leaf village. Keep in mind that Sasuke was traumatized as a little kid, witnessing the murder of his clan, all because of his older brother, Itachi. This made him want to seek power by any means necessary, even if it meant killing his best friend in order to obtain the powers of the Magikyo Sharingan. But after his fight against Naruto, he opts not to kill him as he wants to forge his own path, not of Itachi. So there can be some hope in Sasuke becoming a quote unquote good guy after killing Itachi, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Sasuke grew to hate Itachi and wanted to seek revenge out for him, but it was all null and void once he found out the truth about Itachi. After finding out that Itachi was a double agent for the Leaf, and was actually told by the Leaf higher ups to kill his clan, that's when Sasuke's motive began to shift again and enact revenge on all the residents of the Leaf Village. Had his sights only been fixated on the Leaf Elders, that could have been at least somewhat understandable, but wanting to mark everyone in the Leaf Village going against Itachi's vision is downright evil. At this point of the story, there was no getting through to him until his encounter with the first Okage, him telling Sasuke what it meant to be a part of a village. Sasuke was then for the protection of the village, wanting to become Hokage, but more so as a dictator, seeing the five Kage as a hindrance and wanting to kill them off. Had it not been for Naruto's influence at the end, we would have seen a different type of Sasuke, one I'm sure most people would have feared the most out of. Hidon and Kakuzu are an interesting pair to describe, as while they both differ in ideology, they still have the same evil outcome towards their enemies. Hidon is considered an evil individual because he kills for his god, Josh who demands his followers to cause death and destruction, also that people can understand the pain of others. Hidan is framing this as a good thing so that people can be saved from death in general, saying that killing them would basically remove that fear. Kakuzu on the other hand, didn't care for such a religion, but was still serving a god of his own, that being money. Kakuzu was all about chasing a bag, but only after putting people in body bags themselves. Kakuzu was a bounty hunter on the side, meaning he generally kills people for money, which he explains that money is the only thing of worth and dependable thing in the world. While both Hidan and Kakuzu hated each other for their opposing views, they were the perfect immortal Akatsuki duo, as their inability to die means that it won't matter if each other's attacks were to hit their partners in the crossfire. They can be definitely seen as the most evil in the Akatsuki when all things are considered. And I consider you to be a worthy individual for making it this far in this video, so be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You won't regret doing so, as it comes with you seeing high quality Naruto and anime content in the near future, so best get to it. Donzo being on the list of most evil characters in Naruto shouldn't surprise most of you. For those who are aloof, let me break it down for you. This man, because of his ideals, had the Uchiha clan murdered, forced Itachi to do so, let the info leak on Naruto having the Nine Tails, worked with Orochimaru to conduct experiments related to Senju and Uchiha DNA, stole Shishi's Sharingan, basically formed the evil version of the Akatsuki by manipulating Hanzo into thinking the Akatsuki were a threat to his position, murdered the toad that was going to be sent to get back Naruto from the Mount Miyabuko during the Pain Assault, didn't allow his root organization to help in the Pain Assault, etc, etc. All for the quote unquote protection of the village. Up until the very end of his life, he genuinely thought his actions 
were the best for the Leaf Village, even though it led to many deaths along the way. For someone who is apparently on the side of good, he is for sure an evil individual for the Leaf Village. While the third Hokage is technically considered a good guy in the world of Naruto, you can't tell me that his most notable actions throughout the story are considered to be the stuff of heroes. The main thing I'm sure most people want to bring up is his treatment towards Naruto. He was in let Naruto stay an orphan for the majority of his life, allowing him to live in isolation from the other members of the village. Not even allowing him to have like a ninja auntie until he's at least old enough to go on missions himself is sadistic if you ask me. Now even though all that stuff with Naruto is messed up, I can still make the argument that's not the worst thing he's done to a child. He was one of the leaf elders responsible for the Uchiha massacre, which led to Sasuke being an orphan through genocide. Now I get that Hiruzen was trying to prevent that from being the case, but him not stopping Danzo, or at the very least, reprimanding him for giving the green light to kill out the clan, shows his lack of authority and power as the third Hokage. This would eventually bite the village in the butt, as this was a driving force for Sasuke to take his revenge out on the village. Speaking of which, Orochimaru's direct motive to come back and destroy the village is all in part to Hiruzen and the Leaf Elders as well. The issue being that Hiruzen had an opportunity to take Orochimaru out before it came to that, but he let him slide. I get that it was because of him being his student and all, but he is supposed to be the Hokage, and letting an evil individual like him pass is not befitting of said Hokage. I deem Black Zetsu to be an evil villain, not because of his actions per se, but more so on a meta perspective. Zetsu in general isn't really considered a threat in the grand scheme of things, as he's more so an observer and an informant throughout his role in the story. The underlying issue is that his actions towards the end of the series makes him not only an evil character, but one of the worst villains in the entire series. Him being the mastermind behind everything led to the death of Madara and the revival of Kaguya, we all know how that turned out. The inclusion of Kaguya had negative implications in the story, as it meant that larger than ninja life issues are bound to occur because of Space Ninja, turning the story into a worser version of Dragon Ball Z. Him also manipulating the Uchiha Stone Tablet, which was a driving force for a lot of the main Uchiha characters, makes their journey all the more pointless. And that's my biggest issue with Zetsu being the mastermind, as him doing so completely undermines everything we've seen up to this point. I can't look at the Chunin exams or the first Final Valley fight the same, as I know what's beyond after this. These moments, while grounded in fiction, was more subdued in reality that made these moments feel all the more enjoyable. But now I know that there are space ninjas somewhere out there, it makes these moments less enjoyable. And this is why I consider Black Zetsu one of, if not the most evil villain in Naruto, as his actions make me and others feel differently about the show that we grew up to love. And that's no, no good. good. All in all, true villains are only that, depending on what they end up accomplishing. I personally deem Hiruzen more evil in comparison to someone like Dr. Doofenshmirtz for example, as he didn't do something as heinous as neglecting children. In fact, he did the exact opposite throughout Phineas and Ferb. Evil is what you make it out, and while I could argue that it's far and few between in the story of Naruto, there are definitely some highlights worth mentioning. Which will lead me to my next question. Who do you think is the most evil character in Naruto, and how would you rank the ones I mentioned? I'd love to get y'all's thoughts, so let me know in the comment section below. And if you want me to go further in depth with the villains of the series, click the card you see here which will take you to my ranking of all the villains in Naruto. I'm the Curly Head Okage, and I hope y'all have an amazing and blessed day. Peace.